What's up, gamers? Welcome back to another episode. Um, it's a games pickups video, as you can see. I haven't done one of those in a long time. And uh, I just kind of wanted to do a, a pickups, a uh, what have I been playing, and uh, maybe give you some scores or some ideas of some recent games. I know 2020 has been kind of crazy. Uh, not much game releases, especially from Nintendo. So... It's really a good time to just really kind of recap 2020 as we go into like Cyberpunk 2077 and some of these other uh, big releases to finish out the year. And then obviously the next gen consoles are hitting. Um, so it's just good. It's just a good time to really go uh, and let you guys know stuff that might that has come out recently that might be good to play and what I've been playing and enjoying and then uh, what I've kind of found lately. Um, first, as you can see from the picture. Uh, a surprising pickup, or a surprising thing of 2020 was Ring Fit Adventure. So, this is for the Nintendo Switch. It's uh, it's one of those, like, workout exercise games. And what's interesting about this is that it, all of a sudden during COVID, sold out and you couldn't buy this thing at all. And and it's fairly, it's it's a fair price for this. I think it's just a normal price of a, ga of a game. Um, and it comes with, it comes with all the stuff you need, the ring and, uh, but, but what's cool is it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an an RPG exercise game. So it has a story to it and uh, or story elements to it and uh, different tasks and things that you can complete and it kind of keeps you on schedule. This is surprisingly because uh, you know the we the we had we fit back in the day. This is actually surprisingly a fairly uh, fairly good workout. I, I, I mean, and it has you do exercises and stretches and yoga poses and, um, I mean, for the money and for something to kind of do, especially if you want to keep the kids uh, staying active and they want to play video games, this I would say this is a good buy for the holiday for sure. And uh, and I would actually I would actually uh, give this like a good eight nine out of ten on this. Nintendo did a really good job on it actually. Um, so then as we move on, I think I'll kind of just stick with Switch stuff, and then we'll go into the other stuff. Uh, here's the Ring Fit. So it does come with an actual Nintendo Switch game, uh, physical game, too, as I can put up on my Switch shelf for collection. Um, we'll stick with Switch, because I have a couple. There has been some releases. I, at first, I want to I want to show you guys this, uh, this uh, super rare uh, pre-order that I did. That showed up recently. Super Rare Games sent me a couple stickers with this. But what's really cool about this one in particular is it's uh, it's called the Steam World Collection. And these, uh, I think these were like PC type games that came to the Switch. And uh, I really had a good time with Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig 2. I have not played Steam World Heist. This is the new one. Uh, but Super Rare decided to create like a double pack of these. And if you pre-ordered and bought this one. Uh, the double pack came with all three Steam Worlds, as you can see on the back: Steam World Dig, Steam World Dig Two, and Steam World Heist. Super cool. Has uh, this is kind of how it is. It slides out the bottom, and then uh, Steam World Two is uh, included with that one there. And uh, these are super fun. Uh, like, uh, what, what do you what do you want to call these games? Because because Steam World Heist is a little different than the Steam World Dig games. They're like a platforming, like, mining adventure game. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. And then, uh, obviously, in their uh, super rare, cool fashion, they send you, like, a thank you card. And then uh, they sent, like, some cards, collector stuff there with that. Uh, I recently picked up a game I've still yet to play. Um, but I really wanted this because... Uh, particularly on the Switch, uh, and Best Buy had it on sale one day, is uh, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. And what's cool about this, I haven't really played any of the Shovel Knight games yet, is that it comes with all the Shovel Knight games included on here, and uh, in a physical version. And obviously, as you guys can see here, that I am a physical collector of video games, so this is a very good uh, opportunity to pick up a Shovel Knight collection on Switch if you can find it, especially during the holidays, because I have a feeling this will probably continue to be uh, around the $30 mark or so. And uh, again, another like platforming type, uh, old school graphics uh, type game. 
And uh, they did come out with uh, Shovel Knight Amiibo figures for Nintendo. So Nintendo's pretty much on board with Shovel Knight. And uh, it would be super cool to see uh, him added to Smash. Uh, today, uh, Nintendo announced the next Super Smash Bros. character. And I kind of figured that's what it was going to be. But it's uh, it's uh, Steve from Minecraft. Or Steve of Minecraft. Whatever you want to say. And then I think some of the other Minecraft characters you can swap in and out. But it's a Minecraft character added to Switch uh, today. Uh, to Smash Bros. today. Uh, the next game I got, which is one of my favorite series of all time. Especially back on the PlayStation 2 and stuff. Is uh, they brought Burnout Paradise Remastered to the Nintendo Switch. And uh, I've put a few hours into this, and it actually plays really well on the Nintendo Switch. So, uh, super fun uh, time with this game. Uh, typical Burnout Paradise, but it's kind of open world, and you drive around to find your missions and stuff like that, and races. So, uh, uh, good game. It did a good job on this, bringing this to the Switch, and the graphics are actually pretty good. And uh, it plays really well, actually. Um, and then the last... Uh, Nintendo Switch thing I've kind of been doing. I know today also dropped the uh, the Mario 35th anniversary like uh, versus game or whatever. I'm gonna download that after I uh, finish this video. Uh, but obviously the big thing everyone's talking about is Super Mario uh, 3D All Stars. I did a reaction video to it on this channel. You can go back and look at that. Um, so obviously I've been playing this Super Mario 64. Uh, what do I think of this? Um, as I'm going to let you know some of the other big titles, what I think of those uh, of recent. But what do I think of Super Mario All-Stars? I think... Um, first off, I would give it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. What do I think of it? I think it's a... I definitely think it's a cash grab by Nintendo. But it's a cash grab I'm willing to accept and I'm okay with. Uh, because even though they didn't totally, they didn't put, it, it doesn't feel like they put 100% effort into it. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to be honest and frank and fair among the th big three, and, and I, I've been known to blast Sony lately, I, I have to call out Nintendo on the fact that they didn't just, they could have cleaned up the controls a little bit more, especially for Mario 64, um, but at the same time, it looks good, and it still plays good on there. And we have the Mario games mobily. So, there's plenty of copies out there still. I know it's a limited release, and it ends in March. But uh, every time I go to Walmart, there's still a boatload of these. And uh, Walmart, actually, I would say would be the place to get it, because they sell a lot of their games, or newer games, 10 bucks cheaper than everyone else, or 8 to 10 bucks cheaper. So that would be the place I would grab it, and uh, at least around here up in Michigan, they still have a lot of copies left, and I'd recommend it. Um, just to be able to sit down and handheld, handheld play Super Mario 64 with much cleaner, smoother looking graphics, um, it, it's, it's, it's a good time. And uh, again, 8 out of 10, they could have did a little bit better on this, um, but overall, I'm just happy that we have these games. On the Switch, and I'm not going to complain, especially since this year we haven't had much for games anyway. Um, let's go, before I get into uh, a couple of the retro things I found, let's just go into some of the uh, recent releases. Uh, let's start with the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 uh, remake, I guess. Remaster? Fully rem full remaster, I guess you could say. Uh, this is amazing. If I'm going to be honest, uh, and I, I bought it on Xbox, but you can get it on both PS4 and Xbox One. I have a One X, so I, I just like the way, plus the Xbox controller I like better, and uh, I just like the way the games play on the One X more. Uh, that's my preference. The PS4 Pro is great, too. Um, but this is the best... <clears throat> I know the nostalgia of playing these originally, but this is the best skateboarding game that's ever been made, in my opinion. This is a 10 out of 10 game, absolutely, especially uh, if you're a fan of these type of games, and uh, this just brings back so much when you're a kid. When you drop into that first warehouse level in Tony Hawk 1, it just, like, your childhood just floods back to you, and they did a really good job with this. 
uh, uh, kudos to Activision and uh, Vicarious Visions for just bringing this back. Um, are they going to do 3 and 4 or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. The graphics on this are freaking amazing. I know that. Um, especially on the Xbox One X because it plays enhanced. So, uh, the, the one I would like to see, it, it, if I'm going to be honest, to, for them to do w one more would be, uh, Tony Hawk's Underground. Just because that kind of had like a create your, I mean, you can create your character on this too, but it had more like a story element type to it. And it was super fun. And I played the crap out of that when I was a kid too. Um, so yeah, Tony Hawk. And this is not full 60 bucks. This is a steal of a game. A steal of a game. I think it's 40 bucks. So, uh, if you were a Tony Hawk kid, get Tony Hawk Remastered. Absolutely. Uh, on PS4 or Xbox One. Uh, the other game I've been playing, I kind of took a break from it and then I picked it back up the other night, was Ghost of Tsushima. What do I think of this game? I never did a, I never did a review or, or whatever, fi uh, final thoughts on this game, or uh, first thoughts on this game. Ghost of Tsushima, for me, right now, is probably going to be... Uh, th this is a 9, 9.5 out of 10. Th this is almost a perfect game. There's a couple little things I don't like, but uh, uh, aside from that, uh, it's got the perfect amount of difficulty mixed with a stunning graphics and... Uh, it really pushes the PS4 Pro as well. Not quite as much as The Last of Us 2, but just in general, this plays better. Uh, the story and the lore I like better. Um, ga game of the Year right now, to me, the Game of the Year candidates uh, are going to be this game, uh, Doom Eternal. Probably they're going to put in Nintendo's Animal Crossing. I, I don't think it'll win, even though it was the most popular game this year and s sold, it let Nintendo break the Nintendo Wii s uh, records on Switch sales. Um, so those three, and then um, I, I think, I know we haven't got to play it yet, but Cyberpunk 2077 will probably be one of the top games, and then probably The Last of Us Part Two. I just think The Last of Us Part Two is too divided. Uh... And, and I don't think that will be Game of the Year. I think Game of the Year, honestly, at this point, comes down to Ghost of Tsushima and uh, Doom Eternal at this point. We'll see what Cyberpunk 2077 has to offer. And from what we hear, from what I read and hear, it's pretty epic and pretty amazing. But we'll see. Uh, this just kind of feels, especially off last year, how the Sekiro was kind of the shocking game of the year. I kind of feel like this or Doom will end up being game of the year. Um, the other game I've been playing, and I did a big unboxing of it, was the, of the Avengers game because Square Enix sent mine over early. Uh, this game, this game, is a good idea. They did it's 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 a good idea. Were they kind of lazy on making it? Yes. Absolutely, I can admit that. Uh, is it awesome to be able to play as the Avengers? Yes. Do you play it as them enough? Probably not. Uh, but the story in this is actually pretty compelling. Um, but it's too short. And there's too much frame rate. Not frame rate, but there's too much like loading issues and stuff. So... And a lot of cutouts and funky things happen in it. Uh, the idea is good. Apparently the microtransactions bugs people online. I haven't ran into any of that kind of uh, kookiness or whatever. Because I don't really... I wasn't really planning on playing it online. Um, but for me, that's a 7.5 out of 10. 7.5 out of 10. Good idea, good concept, good story. Uh, just a lot of funky stuff that... Uh, they, they can probably patch and make it better, but if you're going to do a game that big with Marvel across the title and Square Enix behind it, I feel like you need to release it at perfect condition. And with so with it being so buggy, and then them kind of like crapping on the uh, beta of it, it's, it's like you deserve the 7.5. Uh, but it's still fun. I mean, I'd probably just wait until holiday. I bet it'll be on sale. I see tons of copies of it everywhere. So, 
I would just wait for it to be on sale. Even if you just wait till it's half off, uh, it's worth 30 bucks for sure. 60 eh. Uh, my full collector's edition thing probably wasn't worth that, but uh, it's a cool thing to have, and it ended up coming with a lot of cool stuff, so I'm still okay with it. Next. Uh, obviously, they started releasing the sports titles again, because it's about that time. Madden 21 came out, the new FIFA, and then NBA 2K21. 2K21 is the only one I bought, and there's a reason that's the only one I bought, is because I went and splurged for the uh, Mamba edition. Why? Because Kobe Bryant. Uh, rest in peace. I've just really wanted this edition. I have not played it. I have not downloaded it. I know it has uh, some issues. Um, but I figured I would keep my Steelbook uh, thing here sealed. I'll open this up. Uh, I get the Kobe one. I know the standard edition has Lillard on the cover. And then I think like the uh, Xbox... Uh, Series X and PS5, I think, are going to have, like, Zion on the cover or whatever. But it was worth it for me um, before they were gone, because I have a feeling this is probably going to be a collector's item, is to get the Mamba edition and uh, with Kobe on the front. And uh, I think the Mamba edition on the next gen is going to be him in the 24 jersey, and then uh, the last gen is him in the 8 jersey. And that is just really special to me. He's one of my favorite players of all time. Uh... And, uh, it's still shocking that Kobe's not here anymore, and he's not here to see 2020 and see the bubble and everything that's played out with the NBA this season, and I would love to hear his thoughts on, uh, all the race issues we've been facing and the Black Lives Matter stuff, and his thoughts on LeBron chasing that next title with AD, and, uh, just, I don't want to get into a big sports thing, this was just something that I wanted. I know not everybody likes sports games. I know it's not fun to play them uh, year after year when they don't change much, but this one was extra special this year because of Kobe. And uh, the cool thing is what for Xbox, why I got it on Xbox is because it is, they are going to do that smart, like switch or smart transfer, whatever they're calling it, to the Series X. And whenever I can actually get my hands on a pre order or hands on a uh, console, I'm going to get one, but I haven't been lucky enough. Uh, next, uh, Destroy All Humans, the remake of this came out, uh, cult classic for sure, absolutely, TH Nordic, um, I watched a lot of the gameplay of this, it looks pretty fun, I know it's been out for a little bit, but I just picked it up, another good steal, another good buy of the holiday, I think this game's only like 30, 35 bucks, um, so, We'll see come Black Friday and the holiday sales if a lot of these will be on uh, a markdown, you know, uh, for Black Friday sales. But, again, you can't pass this up. I haven't opened it or installed it yet because I'm playing those other ones. But definitely a good game uh, with some updated graphics. I would highly recommend that. Resident Evil 3 came out. I know uh, last year a lot of people thought Resident Evil 2 should have been game of the year. I am on that boat, even though it wasn't my favorite game of the year. I thought it was the best made game of last year and the best game done last year. Sekiro, I think, was just too... I know Sekiro won game of the year, but to me, that game uh, pushed a lot of players away because of its difficulty. Uh, whereas Resident Evil 2... I think Resident Evil 2... I don't think it was the remake part of it why it didn't win. I think it was because it was so short is why it didn't win. But... To each their own. Resident Evil 3. I actually got this on a games, uh, GameStop deal of the day. I think it was that. Or maybe it was just happened to be on sale at all the retailers. But uh, I paid uh, like half the price for this. So worth it. Uh, another 2020 remaster. Uh, one of my favorite. This is when I actually played Call of Duty all the time. But the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The first three Modern Warfares are the best Call of Duties ever made. No one will ever change my mind on that. Uh, and uh, they have the best campaigns and the best stories. Before it got all crazy, wild, going to space, all these extra things. These are the best three. Campaign story-wise, Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3. They did a remaster on this. And uh, I am going to install this pretty quick here and run through it. I will admit, though, 
the this is a remaster, but the Call of Duty Modern Warfare remake that they did, I think this year or the end of last year, or whatever. That is a really good game. I'm not gonna lie, and I know everyone's playing Warzone right now online with that game, but but truly they did a really good job on the campaign, and I was really impressed with uh, the Modern Warfare remake, and uh, hopefully they remake some more of them because uh, they they did a really good job on that, and I would probably give that like a nine out of ten. And uh, to me, if we're talking strictly the COD spectrum, Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3 are all 10 out of 10 games for me. Um, what else here? We got about five more games here on the pickups. And I think that's about it. I haven't really gotten anything else. Uh, so we take a quick break here. I've showed you guys the pop figures. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I, I know uh, a lot of new Mandalorian stuff is out. Pop uh, figures, Lego sets. Oh, the Mario Kart. Uh, or my... Nintendo has a lot of stuff coming out, but Mario Kart Home Circuit Live is coming out pretty quick here, too. That looks awesome, but I think it's sold out, so you're only going to be able to pick it up in stores. But uh, the Mario, Super Mario Lego sets are all out now. Those are really cool, and I think a lot of kids will be asking for those for Christmas. They look super cool. If I had more space or a table to set it up on, I would just get them all and build kind of like a level. But I don't really have the space at the moment. The next game, uh, Best Buy kind of started... Uh, if, if you pay attention, this is Neo 2, if you kind of start paying attention, you'll see that some of the retailers are trying to start to dump some of these PS4 and Xbox One games, which is perfect for us because if you catch it at the right time or catch the online, some stuff is online only and you can do like a store pickup if your local like Best Buy has it in stock. So that's what I did for these next few. But I got like Neo 2 for like $9.99. I got like Just Cause 4, like that cheap. I think Just Cause 4 was 9.99 and Neo 2 was like 15, and I got Evil Within 2 for like five bucks. So, uh, and it's just them dumping stock or extra games or bulk games that they have, at, and you just gotta catch it at the right time for them to be on sale. Um, have not played any of these three. I know Neo is extremely hard. I've played Neo 1. I know Just Cause 4. It's kind of like oh wow, same type of thing over again, but at this price. Uh, it's still a fun game, and, and the world is, like, fully destructible and all that type of stuff. And uh, I was a big fan of the first couple back in the day on 360 and PS3. And Evil Within 2 I have not played yet. A few of my friends have played it. I hear great things about it. Bethesda. And uh, that's the other big news in gaming of late is uh, Microsoft acquired Bethesda. What's that mean for the future of Bethesda? And Bethesda games like Skyrim and stuff, uh, or Elder Scrolls, I should say, um, and uh, Doom games and stuff. Um, am I mad about it? No, I don't care because I'm I am a fan of Xbox. And here here's how I look at it: people complain, or Sony fanboys, I guess. I'm gonna I'm gonna make people mad right here. But Sony fanboys complain that Xbox, all they have is Halo and Gears. They don't have games. PlayStation is where the games are. Xbox is just Halo and Gears, and you have Xbox Live. Ooh, big whoop. And now at the, their new thing their new thing to uh, uh, harp on is uh, Game Pass. Game Pass. Oh, all you have is Game Pass. They'll just put it on Game Pass. For one, Game Pass is a great idea, and they're just upset that Sony didn't think of it first. Next, uh... Back to the original point of them complaining that Xbox doesn't have games. Well, then when they acquire studios, they complain that uh, <laughs> that's a bad thing for gaming. Hey, Microsoft's trying to give you exclusives that you say they don't have. So, here we go. Will the big titles be exclusive? I don't think so, because Doom and Elder Scrolls makes too much money. Microsoft isn't going to pass that up. I think those will still release on, on uh, all consoles. This is just them being able to have a studio behind them to come up with new first party's titles. That's all it is. Uh, and then the last two were some retro things I came across actually just recently. Uh, Dragon Age 2 on the Xbox 360 for only $4.99 in really good shape. Grab that. And then uh, I picked up the Eco... Uh, the Eco and Shadow of the Colossus collection on the PS3, a remastered in high def. Uh, pretty cool. And uh, 
I just really wanted that because I might my PS3 is probably the smallest collection I have. <clears throat> and uh, I saw this just sitting at GameStop. It was only like $9.99. So figured it was a good deal to have that. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I think the next gaming video I'm going to do, I'm going to do some Nintendo Switch stuff because they got a lot of stuff coming out and uh, are coming up. And I think before those titles come, I want to do a, uh, I want to do a top 10 video of the top 10 Nintendo Switch games that are must-owns or must-plays that are not Zelda and Odyssey. So what would that top 10 consist of? You'll just have to watch the next video to see. But uh, I think until then, guys, I think that's all I got today. Uh, again, go play some... Uh, I, I would highly recommend uh, Ring Fit Adventure if you got a Nintendo Switch. Uh... Get 3D All-Stars before it's gone. Tony Hawk is a 10 out of 10. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, 9.5. Probably up for game of the year, I would say, for sure. And uh, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next episode.